next we're just gonna bring in an asshole um it's so we're, we're giant, not assholes to begin with so mm. giant Ooh. big unpuckered butthole at 7 15 in the morning uh-oh brandon Ooh. perna 8 15 here hey oh it's 8 15 oh yeah. so mountain it's time, gotta, mountain time. yeah Good thing you yeah. reminded me it was Eastern time because I was banking on this being at 10, 15 months. <laughs> I was like, oh, shoot. Um, Is the kid off to daycare? Or are you like, uh, you know, ready to go this morning to get some uh, I mean, done? Yeah, she, she wakes us up between 530 and 7 every day. So, okay. I was up yeah, at like so there's no days. choice. Yeah, yeah. You just you just got to get up and go. All right, let's talk about this season for you. So, was it, was it bitter? Next question. Was, all right. <laughs> it was, was perfect. It, what was better? Like, what was more special? Well, uh, I guess I want to ask your individual. Was your individual success worth the pain of watching? the Broncos, like probably one of the worst seasons, maybe in 20 years, like, I mean, maybe in v of your lifetime, was it worth, I'm, I'm saying was the juice worth the squeeze in that regard? Uh, yes. I mean, like as a fan, no, as a fan, mm -hmm. I would rather the team just win. And I put my livelihood and my family at jeopardy as a fan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like the fact that I got to feed my family and YouTube, I had more growth than I've ever had in a single season. That was, I guess I'd, it's like a silver lining. It's like knowing that if they played horrible, the next video was going to do really well was mm -hmm. it made the sting <laughs> oh, yeah. of the loss uh, go away more quickly is the best way. Um, and also it was, I don't think it was the worst season. I think it was just the most disappointing season because mm -hmm. the expectations were so high and then the mm -hmm. performance was so low. And of course, like we've talked about it, it was, the, the real problem was it wasn't just that they were losing. It's that they were outside of the Christmas game, which obviously everybody saw. They were they were one play away from winning almost all oh, of those God. games. Yeah. Like, and it wasn't just one play, like at the end, it's not a one play where it's like, Oh, we need to make this first down or we need to, you know, convert a fail Mary. It was like one play where it's like, all we need to do is basically run the ball here. Yeah. Like it's Get in field goal range. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And with Russell Wilson, a yeah. guy that has been clutch for his entire career, and you're just seeing him make awful, mm -hmm. awful passes. Oh, like that, yeah. those were agonizing games. Yeah. yeah. The entire offense was out of sorts. I mean, oh, there was God. a stat that said something like if they had 18 points, they would have been eight and one. Yeah. And the that, sad part is, like, if they had any semblance of an offense, they're winning the AFC West. Yeah, or at least they would have been, you know, second in the division. Um, they would have been in the postseason. And the, it, what was funny, too, is like the defense was so good, right? For mm -hmm. until like the last like month, but the defense was so, so good. But they also had this like horrible stat that accumulated through the course of the season that when they needed to get a, a game uh, winning drive to stop the opposing team. They get they they allowed the opposing team to score like in the final minutes. I forget it was like six or seven times out of you know, and it's like the defense choked the offense all game long. But after so little complimentary football, when the opposing team needed to just get in the field goal range or whatever in the fourth quarter, they did it. So it was it was brutal. But yeah. what would you say, like, because you said that it wasn't the worst season. What would you say is the worst season um, in Broncos history? Ooh, Just, yeah. I mean, it's easy to remember the greatest seasons, right? But we yeah. all we tend to immediately forget the awful season. It's like that bad date that you went on. You're like, oh. Yeah, well, I mean, that's yeah. the thing. Like, basically, since John Elway landed on the team in 83, they didn't have very many bad seasons or even losing seasons um so like you'd have to go way back <laughs> to like uh and, and even like when brian greasy was there they're still winning enough games 
I think it was I would take this last season because the they had attention, they had Russ. Uh it was like I think the lull with Simeon and Paxton Lynch and Case Keenum and mm-hmm. Joe Flacco. Like, I don't ever want to do that shit again. Like, don't <laughs> I don't want Flacco. I don't want Keenum. He, Russ, maybe he's done. Maybe he's cooked forever, but at least like there's entertainment around there. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and even yeah, when he's right. not playing great, the style of football he plays is a little more fun to watch than Flacco just standing in the pocket for like an eternity you, and then just getting oh, sacked. Dude, Do you sack. think it's a realistic possibility that he gets benched next year? Like Russ? No, I think he's going to play better. And I think like he, the, the offense was night and day different once Hackett was fired. And they let Jerry Rosberg take over. So yeah. I have um, some hope. I don't know if I should. I feel like I'm just setting um, myself up to be really hurt again. <laughs> I would uh, say dude. my oh, my question is too. Uh, this past year, I know you were dealing with a lot of like hype optimism. I know you made all those videos about going off about every single thing about how Nathaniel Hackett was a better coach than Pete Carroll. I, yep. I will go off about that. Yes. What was the big oh shit moment for you? During the year, when you realize this team may not be as good as you think it was, <laughs> that I don't know if there was a specific moment. Um, let me bring up their schedule because, like, I, I, I can't giving them a pass, right? Uh, it's like mm-hmm. they're they've got a new offense, everything is new, new head coach, new quarterback, new offense. Defense looks good, we just need offense to click. So that week one loss to Seattle, like I thought there was a good chance that that would happen because that's a crazy game to start the season to make Russ go back to. The way that game ended, though, was maybe like, okay, Mm -hmm. our coach guy, he's got some stuff to learn. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Little, 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 uh, a little stuff. I would have inspired him then and there. He was a a a A six year old playing Madden would have done better. Maybe it's the pressure, but still, it's like, do a little, but then. They they go into you know or they beat the Texans they beat the 49ers so they started out two and one I would say when oh man those the the Chargers game where they lose well no okay they lose to the Colts in overtime they lose to the Chargers in overtime mm-hmm. and then I knew we were screwed when we lost to the Jets oh yeah mm-hmm. uh, in a game that was sixteen to nine um, and they had lost to the the Chargers nineteen sixteen. I was at that Colts game, so I kind of saw at the Colts game, like, this is, they're playing against a team that is equally inept in terms of the offense. Mm -hmm. And we let them come back, and we went into OT. It was basically that month of October was like, oh, God. I I thought that the Colts game was a big indicator because it was like, like, you ever, like, when you're a kid and you just, your parents are fighting and you have to go somewhere and yeah. like you just know that something bad is happening that was the <laughs> yeah exactly. that was the car accident <laughs> that happened later that afternoon and you were there you were physically so you got to witness yeah. it straight up and just seeing your optimism die in that game like you were happy in the first half and then by the fourth quarter you just i was like oh brandon's in for a long I, year i think yeah. we were all watching just a slow motion car crash that game i'm like mm-hmm. oh my god yeah. even al michaels was just like opening up a flask of whiskey saying are you fucking kidding me <laughs> yeah uh somebody <laughs> asked uh jay flippy asked what do you think about Derek carr getting traded for a first round pick mr that's good chess hair oh yeah so grassi and i got into an argument yesterday uh and then we made a bet so if Carr doesn't get uh if there's not a first round draft pick included in the Derek carr trade i gotta shave tg in my chest hair for tom grassi oh um Everybody thinks I'm crazy that Derek Carr would net a first rounder. Um, maybe he does hold one of That's the cards. Problem. Yeah, it's a it's a it's huge like they, they can just cut it. Yeah, um, but yeah. it's a weird situation where Carr should make him cut him. But I think Derek Carr's a little scared to hit free agency and have to compete with other possible quarterbacks out there. Uh, so I think right. he'll allow the trade to happen. And I think like if if wide receivers last year were commanding first round draft picks, if a team believes in Carr, I don't think it's a stretch for them to give up a first. But 
Right. We'll see. And, I've looked dumb for the last year. So what's another fucking week? Yeah. Um, and him with a no trade clause. Like he's yep. going to be able to dictate where he yeah. goes a little bit more. Mm-hmm. If he has, if he gets cut and he's, a, I know this is, seems weird, but if he gets cut and he's a free agent, he seems more desperate, you know, like he's, yeah. he's going to have to settle for some, something rather than a team that actually wants him, which is, is tough, tough. Yeah. I think he's highly valued by people who know ball. I think like mm-hmm. they saw a situation where it just wasn't the right fit for, for Carr this year, but. Yeah. If you're right, a baby. betting man, where do you think Derek Carr lands? Where is he throwing a ball next year? Um, I think it's either the Jets or I said that. Mm-hmm. the Panthers at this point. Uh, or no, I, I mean the Saints. Now that they have the Broncos first rounder at pick 29, that was the issue I had like yeah. I had before. It's like they have nothing. They, they're like a billion dollars over the cap, which they yeah, are every 55 year. 55 million over the cap. But and like if they have that cap one. hit, who are they getting rid of? Like Michael Thomas? Maybe I think they could. Cut I mean, Michael it. Thomas. Yeah, Thomas is cut for sure. But, they can get rid of Winston and his contract. Taysom Hill can be jettisoned. Like they can make room. Taysom Hill, the Broncos, like, make it happen. Yeah, yeah, as a slash option. All right, real quick before we send you on your way to. It looks like sit in a dark room for several yeah. hours. That's my um, life, baby. Uh huh. Uh, how many wins does Sean Payton add to the Broncos next year? And what is your Super Bowl prediction? I think the Bronco and, and like everybody's going to troll me, but I think nine and seven is oh, where we're going to hit. Okay, bold we're going prediction. to winning record. Mm-hmm. Step one, not step okay. one, nine, okay. um, nine and seven. Uh, my Super Bowl prediction is I want the Eagles to win, oh, but God. I think the Chiefs are going to win. I think. Um, yeah, man, it's just like I've watched. Just, just they find ways to win every time. They do. Mahomes always plays what, like his ankle, allegedly high ankle sprain, <laughs> doesn't slow him down at all. Uh, the Eagles haven't played a team like the Chiefs, and we'll see what happens when they just got to go toe for toe scoring. Um, mm hmm. I think they could score. Like the Eagles do everything, though. They, they do. Score, like I, they play defense. Like they, they just get. They have to run the ball like they've happened. done all postseason. I want them to rush for like three hundred yards in this game, and I want it to be a blowout. But I, I just the Chiefs have hurt me so many times. So I, if yeah. I expect them to hurt me again, it, the pain won't be as bad. I mean, that would be like the the ultimate cap to this awful season, right? Is to have chiefs fans dunk on you. It's like, not only did you have the worst season yeah. of your life, of your adult memorable <laughs> life, we won the super bowl. So here is a big tea bag and just let's drop. Yep. No, on it's your sad, See, sad forehead. I got lulled into a sense of security because there's a lot of like really cool chiefs fans that watch the show and I've interacted with. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, they're not too bad. But then, like, as soon as the Broncos hired Sean Payton, all the shitty Chiefs fans came out of the <laughs> woodwork and just started, like, their team's in the Super Bowl, but they they felt like it was time to shit on the Broncos again for hiring. Well, oh, that never Sean dies. Payton. Division yeah, I don't know. Never I don't die. Know. Oh, we got happens. a Super Bowl this week, but I need to take five minutes to talk about how this hiring <laughs> is terrible. You would not. Wouldn't you do the same uh, thing? Like your team's in the Super Bowl and the Chiefs hire nope. Todd Haley. Not anymore. I've okay. learned my lesson. Okay. No, you I've, have not. I will never do talk not. the Seahawks again. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna. Just You'll be, be out there week one. On the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. Final score before we let you go. Chiefs Ooh, win. Chiefs twenty-seven. Eagles twenty-four. Okay. All right. Justin so... Reed makes the game-winning kick. Okay. Ooh. Justin Reed. Harrison. Butts Let's see what you said last game. year, real quick. Last year, did you give a prediction? You said the Rams thirty to twenty-six. So you were right last year. You were right. Okay. All right, brother. We have our next guest lined up. Thank you for cool. coming. I love you. I will see you I love on you Thursday. Guys. I love you too. All right. I'll see you Thursday, I, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bye. Get out of here. Love you a long time. Get-